Hey, and welcome to this week's episode of Vulnerable with my special guest, Davida Williams. She is the actress known um, for her part in Lizzie McGuire, but she is also so, so many things. First of all, she's a friend of mine since New York days, and we get to catch up. Uh, she's a photographer, as well as someone who dedicates a lot of her time to wonderful charities. And uh, we just connected about so many things. I hope you guys enjoy this episode and get to know a little bit more about her in her newest movie, Game Set Love for Hallmark, as well as a Living Lizzie, a very Maguire podcast with Jake Thomas. Let's check it out. What's up, Davida? What's up? I'm so <laughs> excited to be here. This is wild. Yeah, it's crazy. So the last time we saw each other, I was secretly pregnant. Yeah, newly pregnant. Newly pregnant, mm -hmm. but I was like secret about it too. Yeah, because I think I was scared shitless. Oh. <laughs> it was your first kid. Yeah, it was my first yeah. kid. I still lived in WeHo, um, which is where our new offices are. We just moved. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So thank you for coming to our new. Thank you for having me. I it looks. Know. I mean, it looks great in here. It Dude, looks amazing. Thank you uh, for all things podcast. We're going to talk about Davida's podcast, awesome. um, and well, Davida and Jake's podcast, yes. aka Living. Living Lizzie. Living Lizzie. Yes. Which is really fun. It's fun. It's yeah. been really fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I hadn't seen Jake in years. Yeah. yeah. I hadn't seen him in person in a really long time. Wow. And then he called me a couple months ago and was like, I had this idea for a podcast. Do you want to co-host it with me? And I was like, yeah, that sounds fun. And Jake is like a photographer. Yeah. As are you. Photographer, Which director. definitely get into. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's, He's directed like Features and stuff? Or? I, I don't know. If, I'm not sure about features, but he's been doing a lot of, weirdly, he's been doing a lot of commercials for Nickelodeon. What? Yeah. <laughs> he's gone to work for, yeah. the, uh, <laughs> for the, the enemy empire. Other, yeah, the, <laughs> just joking. Um, so yeah, but he's been doing a lot of commercials for Nickelodeon. And did you ever work for Nickelodeon? I don't know. I don't think so. Mostly Disney Girl. Yeah, did you? Mm -hmm. I did way back in the day in New York. So oh, we okay. should take it back to New York and tell everyone how we know each other and just how far back we go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I met you when I was in eighth grade because we went to the same school in New York called Professional Children's School. PCS. Yes. PCS Keys. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like, I guess an actor school, yeah. entertainer school. Professional child yes. school. Kids we had with like, jobs. <laughs> dude, like, I mean, it was very interesting, like our alumni at that school. Yeah. We had like the inventor of Balzac, which is not what you think it is. It's literally like it was like a ball that was squishy on the inside. I don't know. It made millions of dollars in the 90s. I've, I never even heard of that. It was one of those pictures in the waiting rooms that you would see. They had a bunch of headshots of like oh. distinguished alumni. And there, a guy that made Google what Balzac, Balzac is. Because okay. Now I'm like saying it. I'm like, it doesn't sound yeah. like the best invention. I think. It, <laughs> but the, we had Sarah Jessica Parker went there. Um, we had some very old school, like Broadway babies kind of like that went through that school, but also like some really big. And it was very like, it was a private school in New York City. It was expensive. Yeah, very. Very expensive. Um, I could not afford to go there. I, I was a, um, what do you call it? Scholarship. Like, you were scholarship? Yeah, yeah. Damn, I couldn't even get a scholarship. I was like a financial aid. I think or percent. I think it was financial aid. I yeah. don't know. Because <laughs> school's expensive. It's very, yeah. Specialized school like that. Mm -hmm. um, wait, but wait, down the street, they actually had, um, uh, what was it? Uh, the LaGuardia School. And PPAS. And PPAS. Which was the middle school, high school that was like very performing arts. So you had to, test to get in, yeah. dance, sing, all that stuff. Yeah. PPAS was like, a, but I think, I'm not sure about PPAS, but I know LaGuardia, you weren't allowed to work while you were at school. Yeah, you couldn't leave at all. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't the same. Where PCS, everyone kind of came and went as they. And we were just saying, like, yeah. Leighton Meester. Yeah. Apparently was a friend of mine. She, <laughs> she was in she was in my grade. I, it's fun. It was her birthday yesterday. So I, yeah, I spoke with her yesterday. But yeah, she, we, she went to that school as well. Wow. And, but she only went for like the first part of one year. Of one, yeah. Of eighth grade. Of eighth grade. Because okay. you can leave and work and Was come she doing, back no, obviously she wasn't doing Gossip Girl, but what was she doing? I, I remember she did, I don't know when it was, but I know that she did that Mark Wahlberg. What was the show Mark Wahlberg had where he, it, he wasn't in it. He produced it about his life. Entourage. Oh. She did on but I don't think that was during PCS. Dude, that was, that was definitely later. Later, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's the thing is that like we'd have these like f interesting interactions with really interesting kids. Yeah. And then later down the line, you'd see them 
and you you'd be like didn't we know each other yeah. like <laughs> at a fundamental yeah. milestone part of our life and so we didn't work together on on anything else i don't I think thought, so i thought we were we did like broadway kids together or something i don't think so you yeah. know it was pierce cravens pierce yeah pierce Shout out to to pierce. i love pierce <laughs> he's so cute so anyway so we met that early in life yeah that means i was in i was a f- wait you might have been a freshman no because i didn't go there freshman year so sophomore Shit, I mean, it's possible. Then maybe you were, yeah, maybe two grades ahead of me. Yeah, but I, I so distinctly remember you, and I think it was just because your eighth grade was so full of life. They seemed really tight-knit. We were very close, and there were only like 10 of us. Yeah, that's so. why. <laughs> yeah. That's why. Yeah. And all the boys, I think, were like kind of coming of age, where you had a yeah. lot of boys who were like definitely flirty. And- yeah. You know, and they were, even though they were like, you know, performing arts boys, they were still boys. And yeah. they were starting to like, be cute, and I just remember them flirting with all the high school girls. With the older girls, I can, s- <laughs> I can see that. In yeah. the hallways yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that. Oh my gosh, we really are going down memory lane. Yeah. Um, but then, out of nowhere, I see you popping up, and I'm like, that's a familiar face on Lizzie McGuire. And it just seems like, it seems just so, in some ways it's really reassuring that like you have a community of people going through a similar um, life path as you, um, but it's also interesting at how very different the life path is as well. Like it's like most people you grow up with, if like they go to high school, college, then they're going to get married, then they're going to have kids. Like you know that life path. You know right. what that life path looks like for most people. Some people get divorced, some people don't. Um, but it's it's I don't know if what you think about this, but it does seem like we all kind of come up in a very specific way, and then after eighteen. It's like holy shit, the floodgates open up. I yeah, I, I feel like I was I was pretty sheltered. My I had you know a mom that was around a lot, and she came with me to set a lot when I was a, younger and doing Lizzie and stuff. So yeah, I definitely I got my first apartment, and and then I was on my own, and I was like, whoa, it is crazy out here. I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. But you're still yeah. here too. Yeah, yeah. So I, that's what really is interesting to me. But so go back to Lizzie now, and I'm sorry if I don't know this and I haven't seen it in yeah. previous interviews because I'm sure people have asked you this a million times, but what was your experience like with Lizzie? Because obviously I hadn't seen you past eighth grade. So right. your mom's a New Yorker, yes. right? And your dad's a, a musician. Musician, yeah. But he And so he was traveling a ton, but okay. he'd come to set sometimes and, and visit. Yeah. And then your mom ended up going back to LA with you guys? When you, when you, yes. Okay, how did, that, how did you make it here to California? So I grew up, I was born here, and then we moved to New York for a little bit when I went to PCS. And then right after eighth grade, we all moved back to LA. Wow, why? Um, I don't know. My, is your sister in the business too? She is. Okay. She's a musician, um, okay. which I feel like there's, you know, there's a lot of that out there. <laughs> um, I don't know. My mom, it's so, it's so interesting because her family's out there. And so I don't really know what, what she was thinking, to be honest. She's back now. She lives on the East Coast again. Okay. Full um, circle. Yeah. But so we were here for high school and that's when I started Lizzie was, I was 14, I think. Interesting. Yeah. So was it your acting that brought you guys back out here, you think? I think so. Okay. I, I think probably pilot season. It was, I, Yeah. I would say that's what it was because now we don't really have the same type of pilot season and we have tapes and we have, but he, back then you had to be, be here, here and be doing it. So yeah. I, yeah, that's probably what it was. We were actually just talking about that downstairs about how in-studio podcasts generally perform better than like Zoom. Yeah. I mean, there's some great ones like Pod Meets World is a really great rewatch podcast with friends of mine. And it's and it's like, that's great. But I know that when we're in studio, just like you're in studio with Jake, yeah. that you feel like you're giving the best product, the best version of the podcast that you could possibly do, right? It is, it's fun. It's but it's nice to be face to face and to get to feed off of that person and just see that person. Yeah. You know, there was. I've had enough Zoom. That's the thing. <laughs> Last me a lifetime. It's like we we came from the mindset of coming up in Hollywood, where you had to be here. Yeah, and you mm-hmm. had to be here for months at a time, and you'd have to get your your you know hopefully your agent would get you the right most coveted pilot auditions. And it didn't matter if you were in school, what your job was, you had to make that audition, make it work, be there for it, which is like, now we have these tapes where we could just do it whenever we kind of feel like it. Yeah, it's almost too easy. Yeah. <laughs> I think it triggers us back to like COVID quarantine. It does, yeah, it's it does. Every time I see that, I'm like, ugh. 
<laughs> so I'm curious though too with with living Lizzie, um, what what's the feedback been? What it's what has it been like for you and Jake, like coming back together after you haven't seen each other in a while? It's actually been really cool. I I, I don't think I expected the kind of response that we got at all. I, I didn't really know. I hadn't heard a lot about the rewatch podcasts, and he was telling me about them. And I kind of did some research, and I was like, "Oh, this is a thing. That people, <laughs> this is a thing people do." Yeah. Um, and then when we initially like posted about it, I was like, "People want this, and they yeah. want to. They still watch the show, and they still talk about the show. I think about it, and it's." so distant for me, yeah. at least. Like, I was in high school. Um, so many things have happened since then. <laughs> but it's so nice to kind of revisit. And there were a lot of memories and things that we talk about. And it's it's nice. It was a big part of my upbringing. So it, it's been nice. What do you mean by that? I think those were really formative years. I was like 14 years old when I started. It was most of my high school. And I was I go trying to go to a normal high school at the same time. And but my life was really different from the other kids. And so I kind of, it was fun being on set and being with other kids who like kind of understood. And um, so, yeah, it, it, I don't know. It kind of, Lizzie kind of changed my life, I feel like. It, it was, from then on, it was different. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting how like when we were in New York, there was always this thing of like, oh, you're a New York kid. That means you're a better actor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it's like, oh, you're from New Zealand or from London. Like you're a better actor. And, yeah. But but it used to be like, oh, you're New York. You're like a real kid. Yeah. Like the real train and edgy kind of. Then it's like you come here and it was like this entire industry is geared towards, you know, you getting your next job or if you're if you're sort of a recurring how can how can you become a uh, you know a series regular? Yeah, like I remember on even Steven, some of our our recurrings really celebrated when they got to become series regulars because yeah. for them it was like I'm advancing, like this time that I've put in is like leading to something. And you, like for me as sort of a principal person, I never really understood that. It was like a privileged viewpoint. Right, we were like, oh that that's strange. Why are they so excited about that? But it's like they're still in a different trajectory. Right. So was it weird? Were you were you regular or were you? No, I was recurring and Got then, it. but we only went two seasons. I don't think people remember Lizzie was like two seasons, but they were really long seasons. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. They were like, I don't know. I think there was a total of 60 episodes, but they were split into season one and season two. What? Yeah. They don't have 65 episodes? I, or it might be 65. They must have yeah, gone yeah, yeah. to 65, right? I think they probably went to 65. Because it's syndicated out the... But it's only, yeah, so two seasons. Okay. So after the second season, the plan was we were getting moved to ABC. as like I a, didn't know that. A norm, it was going to be Lizzie going to high school, what? I guess. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. That's crazy. And then, you know, for whatever reason, it didn't work out. So, but then, yeah, that would have been... Yeah. I personally think that from what I remember is that, you know, Hillary really wanted to be a pop star. Yeah. And when we did Cadet Kelly, it was like she was such a vibrant, ambitious, and her mom was like a, such a powerhouse. Yes. I always say that like, um, what's her name? Ugh, God, why am I thinking of the Kardashian? Kris Jenner. She was the original <laughs> Kris Jenner, right. I feel like. She I was mean, the OG Kris Jenner, but yeah. with much more, I think, like of a, of a conscience. Right, with, I mean, with her there were no, you know, none of that kind of stuff. <laughs> but no, she. I, I always say that about Hillary and her mom. They, they were the first to kind of do the album, do the merch, do the dolls, do, yes. you know, they had, they had, they did it all. And it was yes. largely because she had a, She's, I mean, she's obviously very talented, and mm -hmm. but her, she's a very smart mom. So smart. Yeah. Her mom and I sat next to each other, I remember, during Cadet Kelly, and her mom tried to teach me about how if you sit forward, someone else sits back. And like, I've never forgotten that, but I never could synthesize it because my, you know, my managers, my mom, like they weren't of that mindset, pushing right. me, you know, like pushing me towards understanding that this business is so much of, you know, of the marketing branding strategy. And so when you have that in a stage parent, like how much more successful you can be, I think, in the long term. And of course, like I have no idea about, you know, Hillary's mental health. Like I have, I, unfortunately, I never got to know her that intimately. Right. And um, I'm sure like you guys were probably so young that you guys were just like working, working, working. And then also being friendly, which was like yeah. two, two different things. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, no, she was, she honestly, there's like, I always say there's a few kids out there that just stayed so focused that they ended up, okay, I would say like Kiki Palmer, Hillary. I mean, Kiki's. Tia and Tamar. Yeah, they're doing great. Like some people just really know what they're doing. And by the way, Hillary's mom one time gave me an idea of a script to develop for myself. (gasps) She was like, you need to be making your own projects. And how about this idea? And it was a great idea. I'm sure it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Troy, she had Troy. Yes, was like Troy her... was always around. I forgot about Troy. Troy was pretty cool. Yeah, Troy was, was a tough, big, burly guy um, who was basically like her bodyguard and acting coach and, coach, and yeah. life coach. And and just our everybody's friend. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. Was, he was like, did he yeah. work as your dialogue coach on the set? Or was he just Hillary's? I feel like he was Hillary's, but... Yeah, was helping everybody. Wait, so I remember you distinctly being a mean girl on yeah. the show. <laughs> so when you popped up on my TV, yeah. I was like, "Wait, I know Davida. Wait, she's being a mean girl." Aww. Like, you, that's not her. Yeah, that's so. I yeah, Kate and I were the enemies. Oh gosh, in the in the. I was school. also a mean girl, Taylor. Yeah, Duff. yeah, you were, but you weren't. <laughs> I feel like you weren't like as awful as. We were got it. Maybe so you were meaner. Than yeah, I, was. <laughs> I mean, I well, someone. I think it was Jake that was like, um, "What do you think about this question?" Someone said your character was just so mean, like very one dimension. And I was like, "Well, that's what they that's what they gave me to do. I would yeah. just be walking down the hall and just saying something mean <laughs> to so some, mean. someone." Um, but it was it was. Funny. Were you ever bullied? Like because you yeah. said when you were in normal school your life yeah. was very different. Yeah, I'm normal. I went to an all girls school. Um, which, so which school did you go to? Louisville. It's in Calabasas. Oh, and I was bullied pretty terribly in at that school. Um, I'll fight somebody. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So again, being around like actors, was, right? And kids my age getting to go to the Lizzie set and everybody's like the same age as me right. some, and doing the same thing. It was like, her. you felt seen. Yeah. You felt yeah, That's so interesting. Yeah. That makes sense. And was it, could you tell that there was a difference between like when you were in New York and when you were in California at all? Like, was there any kind of from, you mean when I was in New York first? Yeah, like the, I always thought that the pacing in New York was so much faster. It's so much faster. And like when you're going to auditions, you're walking, you're subwaying, you're rushing. You're, I was telling her downstairs that I like the end of a New York day. I'm exhausted. So tired. So tired. So I I definitely think LA is just an easier life. So you would never live in New York, you think? I might. I mean, I do love it. Yeah. Um, It's a vibe. You just, yeah. You need need a you need a lot of money and a lot of energy (laughs) and a lot of yeah. I think I I I did go there and I think I was pretty exhausted. Yeah. I don't know. It's a very inspirational place for sure. It is. It is. Um. Okay. So now Lizzie's done. We're and and like you have people like. You know, Miss Duff, um, Susan Duff, being like, you should do this. And and were you getting, what were your next plans? Did you have ideas for, like, working with Disney or? You know, I think I, right after Lizzie, I ended up doing a pilot mm-hmm. with the Jonas Brothers. And they, it was for their show. They ended up having a series on Disney. Yeah. Um, but then I just did the pilot, and they were supposed to be, like, superheroes. And I was like their enemy kind of situation. Another mean girl. They were, yeah, they You're were like, like the sweetest <laughs> human being on the planet. <laughs> they were supposed to be like high school superheroes or whatever. And okay. then when they ended up picking up the show, they completely took away the Superhero. concept. Yeah, and just made them, you know, normal kids. So um, this was like pre-Marvel. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, but I guarantee you we would have had a very different Jonas Brothers yeah, experience. experience. So. So then Did I they up, also play music and they were superheroes? Yeah, they were, Shut they up. were musicians. That's way too much. Yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, so they ended up not doing that and like changing the show completely. So then I, I I didn't do the show. But after high school, I took a big break for a couple years. And I moved back to New York, actually. There we go. Yeah. Um, and I'm I worked, loving this right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm loving catching up with you. <laughs> Me too. I, really uh, I worked at Ford Models as like a junior agent. What? In, yeah, in their like commercial print department. Because I thought maybe I wanted to try something in the industry, but not in front of the camera. And yeah. so I was like, maybe an agent, which... Definitely not. No. Why? I think it's just, um, it's a pretty thankless job, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, you work really hard and there were some girls, some some clients that, the department was pretty much all women. Okay. Um, There were some women that were very sweet and then there were 
some women that were not so sweet and you have to kind of just deal with it and like yeah <laughs> you know it's so. like devil wears Prada kind of vibes yes yes in New it York was, of all places it was on Fifth Avenue in yeah. you know so well Ford Models is like the yeah. Ralph Lauren like it's like been around forever forever yeah. Did, did they rep? Was it? Did they rep Brooke Shields? I I feel like think they repped so. like the Every, OG baby models. They had everybody. Yeah. I just remember when I was a kid. I think I went to Ford Models, and they told me that my I had to grow into my nose. I got some really evil feedback that like destroyed my self confidence for years. What is that like? I mean, did you have to give feedback? To- so uh, yeah, I think okay. I. So I had two um, bosses in my division who usually would be in charge of the that kind of feedback but it was interesting like they taught me how to measure like tape measure bodies okay um because models would come in and they'd measure them to they, see yeah. if they gained an inch or oh. that kind of you know wow thing. Um, an inch right like yeah. that no, really, really makes that big of a difference yeah so um do you think it makes that big of a difference like no okay I, you mean the yeah like do you think that was just so random or I, is it just like yeah protocol? I, I mean yeah, it was definitely protocol. Like everybody was doing it. They yeah. always were measuring and weighing and it's crazy. It's all those kind of things. But I just I'm so happy mm-hmm. now with how so many of the industries have changed modeling and acting yeah. because there was just way too much pressure. Yeah. Like way too much pressure. As kids and teens, they would tell us like, you know, you got to were you ever told you had to like lose weight? I was always very thin to the point where people thought I I was anorexic. Oh, okay. And I actually just finished Jeanette McCurdy's book, um, and she had a legitimate. I have to read that. Please, yeah. please do. Like, send it to your friends. I bought it, and then I had to listen to it on an audiobook. I never, ever. I was so blessed to not feel that pressure. Yeah. Um, but but it's very real, and I'm sorry that that happened. I did get I did get teased in other ways. I got teased for my teeth. I got teased for my breast size. Um, you know, and and these things like were semi adjustable, but at the same time, it's like. Still not great to have to experience body dysmorphia. No, yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's definitely starts that pretty young. Yeah, yeah. So you experienced that as an actor, and then it's like you were you were like a, uh, sort of expected to kind of bring that into the job at Ford. Yeah, and I just was like, I don't really. This yeah. doesn't make me feel good. I don't like it. I never actually. I had to measure like one girl for practice, and I was like, I hope. You had you to know. like lock eyes with her and you're yeah. like, I can't look. <laughs> I don't want to have to look in her face. This is really sad. And no oh, one okay. to me looked, no one needs to be measured. But no, right. I mean, it was just, it was always like, oof, I don't want to do this, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, because I, you know, you've, you've been there acting and yeah. being told certain things. And you're like, this isn't the other side of that what I, I want. want. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah. So then speaking yeah. of other side of the camera, I mean, you quite literally became a photographer, right? Yeah. I started doing a lot of photography. After in, New York? Yes. Okay. After New York, um, early teens, into my 20s. Um, yeah, I started doing a lot of photography and um, portraits of women mostly. And I did you. And yeah. I did a couple of like different music videos. My sister, Dana, who's the musician, did a cover of Flight, Fleetwood Mac with Leighton Meester. Oh my gosh. Um, and we did a video for that and it was fun. So I've done like some, a little bit of directing here and there and photography and stuff, but. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And did you feel a lot more empowered in that regard? Yeah, I love it. I yeah. really, I do love it. What would you say your approach is to your, like to the creative people in front of the camera, having sort of seen the extreme that like the modeling, you know, world can can have, you know, at the hands of that kind of mentality versus like when you were like, I'm going to direct, I'm going to approach this. Because like I've directed a feature and I had kids in it. And I was like, it is very important that these kids feel like they're having a good time. And it's like, you, I like immediately took on all of this understanding of what they must be going through. So I'm just curious, like, what is your approach into when you're creating art? I like I, I like people to kind of what you said. I like them to be themselves as well. I, I you know a lot of directors and a lot of productions can kind of like put so much on you, yeah. and then they end up like ruining what was already there and or why you got hired in the first place. So I like people to just like I like to see what people bring. Mm-hmm. Is what I, yeah. You like let the moment. Like, yeah, yeah. Breathe. That's so good. That's actually a really professional way of doing things because. I think so much, like, I remember when I was directing, I was like, I made my day. 
I cut some shots out, but like I made my day. Yeah. And so for some reason in my mind, I was like, I'm working with kids. I just want to make my day, not make them go OT. True, yeah. And so, and so for me, that was my bottom line. But like, um, but but it is a it is a fine line, especially if you're creating for it to be authentic, and in doing so, you can't rush some moments like that. Yeah. So, speaking of sort of like greater purposes and stuff, something that I remember about our like conversations, especially when I was pregnant, was that you're trying to promote inclusivity and awareness, even of women and different bodies and all that stuff. So how did you start to decide, you know, to start your your photography blog? And then also you've gotten into like wonderful initiatives with Native Americans. And um, I believe it was also, there was like a, a it was foster care? There's a couple different um, nonprofits that I'm on the board of. And I know which ones you're probably talking about. And there's Watts Community Corps, which is, um, we work with like 400 families in Watts that live in the um, Nickerson Gardens housing project. Mm -hmm. um, and we do groceries and hot meals and after school care. And there's a STEM program now and field trips. We just sent a bunch of the kids to an orchestra last week at UCLA. Yeah, so we just, we've, um, we've been working on a ton of stuff. And I'm so glad that the woman that founded it, Tanya, she's a Watts local, born and raised. Mm -hmm. um, That's important. Yeah, it is, because you want people that are in the community and mm -hmm. that are asking the community what they need. And mm -hmm. um, so I'd just been volunteering with her for a while, and then she was like, do you want to be on my board? And I was like, yeah, that sounds, that's fun. It's so, such an honor. Yeah, me. it is, yeah. it is. I don't, I don't know how it started. I think I just, I've been volunteering for a long time. When I lived in New York, I was volunteering at Sylvia's Place, which is not. I remember that. Why do I remember it's that? It's not there anymore. Okay. Um, but it was the first youth LGBTQ homeless shelter okay. in New York City. Yeah. Okay. So everyone was like 16 to 22. Um, and how old were you when you, well, that was when you went back after back, Lizzie? Yeah, I was about 18. Okay. And my mom would go with me. And yeah, it was really, it was really eye opening. Um, so I just kept doing it and doing it. And then I was like, well, I need to be more involved and more consistent with things and not just come in and volunteer for a little bit and leave. I need yeah. to, I kind of want to make this more of my life, I guess. Volunteering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I, I, I don't know. I think that there people need help here and especially I mean you know I think there's such a big push internationally especially for Americans to build an orphanage in another country and do this and that and the other thing and I think that's great that's needed yeah, yeah it's great absolutely um but there's so much that's needed here and there's so many kids living in poverty and there's so many that that need our help but the fact that this was on your radar when you were just coming off of a Disney Channel show, <laughs> and you know what I mean, and like you go back to New York, yeah. and it's like you could have very well just focused on trying to get on the next show or the next thing, and just stayed in one place. But you went. That's just so thank you impressive to me. So not Mean Girl of thank you. you. <laughs> thank you. Yes, not not the character I played on that show. I love that. Certainly, <laughs> I find that so ironic that most of the people that play villains are actually quite nice. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's true. So you've got the Watts thing, but then you, there's all these other things that you were sending me for, like, you were doing, like, diaper. It was the diaper. Was that for the Watts? Yeah, that was, no, that was uh, probably. See, I can't even keep up with how good of a person you are. <laughs> that was probably Pine Ridge. I do a lot of nonprofit work for a reservation that's in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm hooked up with a lot of the nonprofits out there. Um, there's, like, the Lakota Children's Justice Center. And they're the ones that help foster kids that are in the court system. Mm -hmm. um, and so they make sure they're safe and they're not in, end up in a bad home or mm -hmm. whatever it is. Um, you know, because not, not a lot of people are keeping track of indigenous children. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I do a lot of drives for just as needed. There's new moms and diapers and mm -hmm. all these things. I'm pretty sure I sent diapers. I'm sure you, yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm sure, pretty yeah. sure I like, I just had the baby when you sent me that email. And because it had been months since we had seen each other. So I think I had the baby or I was like really emo. And I was like, <laughs> I need to help these babies. <laughs> the baby. Just yeah. getting the information. I'll send the diapers. <laughs> I, yeah, I always do a little like write up of, you know, where it's going and yeah. to who it's going to. And So um, that's a lot of work. I mean, it's it's your time yeah. and it's not just your it's not just your energy, but it's like you, you're, you're extending yourself into your community. Um, have you ever had like people that you thought were 
I don't know, more supportive or more clued into the world that just disappointed you in your friend group? Um, yeah, I think, I think, I think that is, um, that's actually really common. I did it. I did a Christmas drive this past year mm -hmm. for Watts this past December. And a friend of mine helped me and she was like, so many of my friends didn't step up to the plate. And I was like, yeah, that's just what that's just, you gotta get used to that. <laughs> Cause yeah. there, there are so many people that I'm like, oh, they seem like they're charitable or helpful or they mm -hmm. talk a lot about it or they post a lot of things on their Instagram and you think- <laughs> They virtue signal yes, left and yes. right. Yeah, so you think they're gonna be the ones to really help. And then it's always, it's always the most random people that you didn't think were gonna answer your email that come through. So yeah. That I, is interesting. What do you think it, what do you think? So I've actually recently just been able to start, uh, you know, volunteering, donating, you know, I recently, <laughs> I recently, this is a funny story. Sorry, side note. This isn't about you to be <laughs> no, So I got asked to go to a charity auction um, and uh, to be someone's date to a charity's auction, a girl. And I was like, cool, I'll come. And, um, and I don't even drink. Okay. I don't drink at all. Stone sober person here. Is this in LA? So I, no, okay. this was in Austin. Okay. And um, it was right around the holidays. And um, it was like, uh, they started, it was talking about NICU babies. It was March of Dimes, the March of Dimes. And so uh, they were like, okay, we're gonna, you know, everyone th throw the paddle up. And then we, we got sat, just because this lady was one of the people on the board, she had me sit next to her and, um, and I was like, okay, cool. I'm with all the big donors, yeah. right? <laughs> even though I didn't even pay for a ticket. I felt <laughs> bad about that. And, um, and I think it was like a taste of Austin. So they had all the best, oh, there's nice. a lot of great food in Austin. Yeah, I've heard that. So I was eating all the food, eat all the food. <laughs> and I felt like, why, what am I even doing here? And so then they start talking about how they're going to do a, a, a holiday meal with a top chef, not like of the, like she won top chef, her name yeah, is yeah. Chef Janelle. And, um, they showed the whole thing, you know, they showed the whole sad video and like the amazing, like inspirational video, I should say. And then I was like hooked, hooked. So the paddles start going up um, and I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but they say, would you please sponsor for, you know, X amount of money. We're going to start the bidding at $1,000 um, to sponsor 25 NICU families in like, in like the NICU during wow. a holiday. Now I'm assuming it's Christmas. I'm thinking Hallmark movie. Like I'm like, these babies, these parents, they need love. They need support. So my paddle starts going up and I'm like, okay, what am I doing? I spent $4,500. For oh me, gosh. that is a ton of money <laughs> for something that's charitable. And I swear, I was like, I was so high. I was yeah. so excited. That yeah. adrenaline rush was so real. Because these schmoes, these guys, they were like putting their paddle up for like Napa Vineyard weekends and like whatever. And I'm like, you guys are, I, I thought that they would do the right thing right, but for this experience because it seemed so right. But, you know, thank God they were just there doing, you know, contributing the way they wanted to and they they did an okay job. But anyway, my husband calls me. He's like, because <laughs> I, I, I gave him my Amex. I was like, here you go. And then he calls you. He's like, what the fuck? Oh my God. He's like, what the fuck did I just see? Because he wasn't even in town. Oh my God. And I was like, babe, 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 Nikki baby's holiday. Calm down. Oh my God. It's a good, it's a for a good. And he goes, he breathes a little bit. He goes, you're right. You're right. It's right. It's yeah. okay. It's yeah. okay. So like, I do, ex I do understand like, people sort of like confusion on where to begin. Yeah. Well, you just have to, you just yeah. have to show up yeah. and try to start helping. Yeah. Even if it's not monetarily. Yeah. There is, a, there, and there's a lot of organizations out there and you don't know, you know, and I think legally in California, you can keep like 60% of your donations, like monetary donations. So for your company overhead and stuff. You're talking about like tax, tax write off kind of thing or? No, I mean like, an organ like if you say you donated like a hundred bucks to a certain nonprofit, mm -hmm. they could for whatever you set you think you're donating it to, they could keep sixty of it for like their salary and then they'll give the other forty to what you wanted it for. So yeah, you just have to Yeah. You yeah. just have to check and see how much people keep and interesting. <laughs> yeah, you're that's a warning. Yeah. That's, you're suggesting like, yeah. okay. Um so that's amazing. So then you've done all these amazing things. What do you love the most, do you think? Because you're acting again, which we got to get into. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, I, I think acting and really acting in nonprofit, I think is probably when I have the most fun. I realized I, I worked so hard doing the Christmas drive this year. And then once it happened, I was like, 
It was like the best day ever. It was the best party, the most fun. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I just have so much fun. And then when I'm on set, as an actor, it's really fun. I think, you know, as a, when you when you're a producer, it's like not as fun. Not fun at all. <laughs> it's so you I'm, have such pretty privilege when you sit there yeah, and you're like, oh, exactly, I'm oily. and everyone's babying you, kind of, and they, you know, you feel so, at home, kind of. Yeah. So I think, yeah, yeah I think the acting, just kind of getting to do what I love and not having to stress so much. Yeah. Because um, I do like the directing and the producing and all that, but it is it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so you you have now. I cannot believe this because it should not be the case. But you're in your first starring role. Yeah, yeah. Isn't for that this crazy? Movie. Yeah. Game set. What is it? Love. Game Wait. set. Love. Yeah. Yes. Game set. Love. Yep. Yeah. And I saw it. Oh, you did. I saw the. I saw. Well, I saw the poster. Okay. And and then I saw the commercial. Okay. <laughs> and then I was like, oh. It's She's killing it. She's killing it. It's not easy to get a Hallmark movie. No. And I, it's so funny. I like, I've always loved Hallmark, you know, the Christmas movies yes. and the the rom-com, because there's not a lot of rom-coms these days. It's, no. It's a lot of, you know, depressing stuff that we audition so, for. Yeah. So, yeah. so there's like, it's not a whole lot of rom-com stuff. So I remember getting the offer and I was like, oh my God, this is going to be so fun. Yeah. Um, I went to Canada for like a month. They put me in, um, tennis lessons oh, and fun. yeah yeah so I really played tennis in the movie and oh I mean, cool I it was they they made it look much better than I actually was <laughs> I think but did you have a double um no I will I think I had a double at one point but I just ended up doing everything myself anyway cool um yeah it was it was like it was a lot of fun to film that's really awesome yeah. so you would work for Hallmark again do yeah. you feel like do you feel like you will because, I I mean I would love to because I feel like they always they, they bring people back. Yeah. yeah. So. Good. <laughs> We're manifesting really, that. Yeah, it really was. the. It was just such a seamless, easy job. It, you know those sets you go on and it's like they've been here before. So oh, it's yeah. just like, you know. Like their family. And, yeah. And they'll take care of you. Yeah. And you're yeah. not. It's like you're not really working overtime. You're just. It's like I a well oiled. <laughs> yeah. Well oiled machine. Everyone is so nice. <laughs> so nice. In oh, Canada. my God. So nice. I, I finally was like, oh, I get it now. They that's really. Where in Canada were you? Vancouver. Okay. I was, I, so I got married in Banff, Canada. You got married in Canada? I did. I didn't know Isn't that. Isn't that random? Is your husband Canadian? No. Oh, okay. no, no ties to Canada whatsoever. It's just beautiful. I mean, it's, it's just this one resort I went to when I was a kid and uh, I was in um, some touring production of Sound of Music um, and we stopped there and it was this, it's now a Fairmont. Um, but before it was like this old tucked away hotel, almost very like The Shining esque, but <laughs> really beautiful, very old. Marilyn Monroe stayed there, and oh wow! And so um, yeah, I mean, I just I, I thought it was magical, and I think I projected like this is where I'm going to get married someday, and yes. so I did and on you New Year's did. Eve, and it was like so perfect. And now That's I'm so about nice. to well, this year will be our tenth anniversary, and I'm like, do we go back? Like, do we share it with the girls now? That would know? be really nice. Yeah. Yeah. How, six and four. Six and four. I think that's, yeah, that's a great age, because now they'll, you know, they'll have that memory. Yeah. And They're so, like baby, baby. can I ask you a question? Yeah. What is dating like in LA? Well, I have- Has it gotten any better? No, not at all. Okay. I, <laughs> I, I thankfully have had a partner for five years Oh now. my gosh, you have? Yes, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic news. Yeah. That's great, because I knew I knew a time when you were, you were, yes. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> got it. We were, when I, you knew when I was engaged to the other. It was a long time ago. Long time ago, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's, but my sister is single, and so I get She's these, here? Yes, and so I get these- stories from her and I'm just like this sucks uh, yeah I I well online dating is like a thing it is and you know what's crazy is I've n I never had to do that because it was I didn't either it was like before yeah I was so, so five years you're thinking like has been like it's been mostly people doing online dating now. yeah yeah I think it's like more more prominent than people actually meeting each other. Yeah, like. I think so. So that, thank God I don't have to do that because my yeah. sister does the apps and stuff like that. Yeah. Which app does she do? Um, I don't even, I don't know. I think she was on Raya. I was going to say, Raya's Raya, like the LA Facebook. The LA one. But even that <laughs> one is like, you're meeting a lot of like, yeah, 
DJs. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Men that go out a lot and yeah, no. you're like, I don't want DJs. Yeah. No. I mean, they're cute. They're cute. Right. But no. you don't want a guy that's in nightlife. Yeah, you don't. At this age. I mean, maybe if she were Because like, like, you can't even go to the club. Like, yeah. I'm tired. Too, way too tired to way. be up with you till two, three in the morning. Way too tired. Did you have a club phase? I did. But I was like, it was before I was old enough, I feel like. Like, it. By the, no, you got to tell me about your club face. Because, like, did I not see you out? I, I would don't have, know. I feel like we must have run into each other, but I went to all of them. Like, wait, so the all ages one that all the, the Disney and I oh, guess. Oh, I went one time to that. What was that one called? Club One Seven. Yes. <laughs> because it was like you were, you was had to be Hollywood 17 and, and under. Yes. 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 Club One Seven. And oh there was a VIP section oh, that was yeah. roped off. Yeah. I remember going one time and like. The who's who was there. Frankie Muniz was in the roped off section. Of course like, wow. he was. Well, he was always <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cool. And then. That's so funny. And then I graduated to like. The do and the you know voyeur yes yes what else what else were those? hide hide <laughs> um, dark which, times I went to a hockey game for the first time ever like a couple weeks ago at the you know downtown yeah. stadium and they have like I saw from across the way I was like oh there's a hide box they have like <laughs> one box where people can go in and party like during I no. was, yeah, it was wild I hadn't heard hide and like. 15 years. I know, man. <laughs> One Oak. Like, New All York had them. its whole other night scene there, too. Yeah, I just... Totally different. I, you know what I was? I think about sometimes? I'm like, thank God I didn't have social media right? during those days. <laughs> no one has photos of me just, like, no, I dancing was just... on those tables. <laughs> and you know. I just, I just did a TikTok where I was talking about my hoe phase, and people were shook. They were like, you didn't have a hoe phase. Pictures are, didn't count. I'm like, oh, honey, it counted. And there's no pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's none. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> Thank God. Amen. It's... You know what? I think it's so funny how people see... Disney girls grow up and they just expect the worst or they expect all this like, you know, crazy, uh, you know, information like they like like they assume it. And if they don't assume it, they really want to know. Yeah. They really want to know, like, where the bodies are buried. Well, I think that's because for so many people, like so there were so many child actors who didn't have you know, had a, had a rough time and they had a very public rough time. And so they think that it's, everybody's kind of in the same. That right, is. right. And it seems to me like, would you say that overall you had a pretty good experience then? I would say, yeah, I think definitely uh, on, on Lizzie. Yeah, yeah I think good. Um, I did. I think once I turned 18 and was kind of like left to my own devices is when I kind of was like opened up to all the different things that go on. You know? My mom said the same thing. She sat me down um, and she's like, Christy, you're about to turn 18. The entire world is about to come down on you. And I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And it really did change the way that people treat you, the hours that you work and the expectations about your body. And and, and, and so conversations were being had with you uh, very quickly yeah. after you just kind of coming of age because you are kind of in a bubble before 18. So you're a little immature. Yeah. But when the 18 happens, it's almost like it's almost like that didn't matter. Right. And like you had to catch up overnight. Yeah. Yeah. It's it. Yeah. It was pretty. <laughs> I just rem I, I just remember going to an audition and it was at an actor's home. And I like I just didn't. I mean, I was 18 and I was like, this seems weird, but. It can't be weird. Like, yeah. why would it be weird? Right. You, you just know? trust. So I went there and he was a very successful actor and he was in a bathrobe. And he, <laughs> yeah, like had me read with him while he was sitting in a bathrobe in his like living room. And then was like, can you stand up and like turn, had me do a spin in, and like, oh my God. So he could, I guess, ch and I remember leaving and being like, this is, this is what it's like without my parents, I guess. I, like, wow. Did you, you tell know? your mom? What yeah. Yeah. I mean, my mom and my dad were both like, Okay, that's yeah. 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 Um Aww. but yeah, that was just my first kind of like, oh, you're you're not a kid anymore and they're not gonna treat you like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I feel you. Yeah. I feel you. I think we're like sisters in arms here. Yeah. This. The nightlife. 
Yeah. <laughs> the New York, LA. I'm getting thrown to the wolves. The Disney, the, all of it. I see you. And I'm just so happy to reconnect. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And how about the the podcast? So like, where can we find it? And It's on all the platforms on um, Spotify and iTunes and just everywhere pl- podcasts are. It's Living Lizzie. A, Magu- a very Maguire podcast. <laughs> where did where did that part come from? He I'm- made that up. Jake <laughs> Thomas. Jake Thomas made that up. He he did everything. I kind of just like showed up one day and he had it all planned He's out. Like, just talk to me. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that was his idea. Good. Um, yeah. And is it what day does it come out? Uh, it comes. It's already out. Yeah, but is it like every oh week? every Friday? Every okay. Friday. Yeah. I don't know. Perfect. <laughs> it's every, every single Friday. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. You guys deserve all the love. Thank you. So do you. It's a great rewatch podcast. You know, I think. You know, people sometimes are really, they don't understand nostalgia. So I'm curious, what does nostalgia mean to you and why is it important to like our fan base or to folks that grew up around us? Um, I think it's, to me, nostalgia reminds me of like good times. Maybe it wasn't all good, but it, but it brings me back to a time where I was, I felt, you know, kind of safe and I lived with my parents at my house and I had my, my no sister. Bath robes. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like a, just not a lot of stress, no bills to pay. I, you know, right? I, that's what I think nostalgia is. It's just like, it reminds you of just such a good, happy, fun time. Right. Yeah. Almost like selective. Like, yeah. Even if they're, yeah, you take, it almost filters out uh, and focuses the, the mind on the positive feelings. Right. And I like how many things, in this world can do that. Right. Alcohol, like all the things that you think about the things that get your mind in a place where it disconnects from negativity. And and nostalgia doesn't have any like bad parts. Right. That's why adults go to Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> it's because they yeah. it makes them happy. It's- well, and millennials more than most people are more nostalgic. Because people are really they're haters on nostalgia. I don't understand it. You mean like a, as a, in a response to the yeah, podcast? Yeah, like people or, are like, oh, get over it or like don't I've, talk about this. Like, <laughs> fuck off. I've gotten a couple of messages like that or, or comments that are like, why are you living in the past and kind of thing. And I'm like, well, other people seem to be enjoying it. And I think, I, I don't know, it just kind of seems maybe it triggers something for them. It's like. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Maybe they don't want to go back there. Like maybe, Fair. maybe Fair. the early 2000s were a rough time for yeah. this person. No, that's really fair. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Because, you know, thank you very much. You are the kind of person I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for you. coming on. I'm, I'm in full support of the the Lizzie, the Living Lizzie. Please go watch it. Please go listen to it. Thank can they watch you. it too, like on YouTube? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Because some people can... want to see it. Yeah, yeah. We can, you can see us on there. Awesome. So. And it's on Jake's uh, YouTube, right? Jake's YouTube. Yep. Okay. Jake Thomas. Awesome. I am in full support. I love you. I love you too. Thank you so much. Let's keep connecting. I would love to. Yeah. Okay. We'll keep in touch. All right, good. And I'm so proud of you for all of this. This is crazy. Thanks, this is babe. so cool. Thanks, babe. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for checking out this episode of the Vulnerable Podcast. For clips of this episode, go ahead and check out the Podco YouTube channel. Links in the description.